Welcome to my video on Module 5, the Introduction to Inferential Statistics. And our topic here for this module is estimation for one and two populations. As you can tell by the name estimation, obviously this is a chapter where you'll be estimating some statistical variables. Statistical variables such as the mean, the percentage, the standard deviation, the variation, the difference between two means, the difference between two proportions. These are the things, type of things that fundamentally in, in inferential statistics, a researcher would want to estimate. Say, giving you a few general examples here, giving you, say, you're looking for the uh, average IQ for the entire United States population. Now that takes, that, that's almost impossible to achieve because you have to question every single American or every single person that lives in the United States and then <laughs> at their IQs <clears throat> and divided by the total number of people and that will give you the mu, the actual mu, which is the average IQ for the US population. But see, usually in research, you don't have that much time and that much money to allocate to figure that out. So therefore, the concept of estimation becomes quite important because you could use some hardcore mathematics to create formulas that will allow you to sample about a 150 people out of 370 million it's really crazy so you you sample 150 so your sample size is 150 out of 370 million and you find some average there average iq but that's just the average iq for the 150 people not 370 million but then it's crazy because if you know the standard deviation and stuff then you could use some mathematical formulas that will take this sample information called sample information. That means information about a sample that, that doesn't cost too much and doesn't take too long to figure out. So it takes the sample information and it uses the sample information. It creates formulas and it allows you to estimate the actual mean of the entire population with a pretty high accuracy. Accuracy is like 90%. 95%, 98%, 99%. These are very, very high accuracies. So you notice something that would have cost years, I mean, a lot of money and years and years uh, to, uh, to a company, you could simply with like 150 samples, you, you could make this accurate of an estimate of the value you're looking for that would have otherwise cost you 10 years of work and hundreds of millions of dollars in research and time. So you notice, so, so you see these estimation concept that these math people came up with these formulas that will help people make these estimations is saving the world, the industry on the planet, trillions and trillions of dollars a year. So it's quite important for us to learn, or at least to get an introduction to how these things are calculated. Of course, the mathematics behind it is pretty convoluted. You need to learn a bit of calculus. You need to get deep into what's called the uh, sampling distribution and central limit theorem to see where these formulas come from. But in this chapter, in this module, it's really been simplified for you. So basically, I'm going to be asking you to estimate the mean of a population when sigma is known. And these are like item based. So these are like every question that you're responsible for is one of these. I'm going to ask you to estimate the mean of a population when sigma is unknown, I'm gonna ask you to estimate some percentage of a population or a proportion of a population. Uh, I'm going to ask you to estimate the difference between the two averages for two different populations when sigma one and sigma two are known. Now this one, if you're wondering, say I have two populations, you have Delta airline pilots, and you have United Airline pilots. And uh, you want to figure out the difference between their average salaries because you're trying to figure out if these two airlines are paying their pilots on the average the same amount of money. So you basically want to know if mu1 and mu2 are equal or not. Well, there's a lot of pilots in here and a lot of pilots in there. So a simple study like that will cost you a lot of money and a lot of time. So again, the sampling distribution in this chapter comes handy, meaning all you do is you take a sample of like 35 people out of this one, 
you take a sample of 43 people out of that one, you figure out their average salaries, you figure out the average salary of these guys, you figure out the average salary of these 43 guys here. So you see something that it cost the company years and millions and millions of dollars is gonna cost you like a day worth of work to get it done with minimal cost, because all you're doing is you're sampling, you're sampling uh, 35 people out of the first population and 43 people out of the second population. So that's not much work. So, so now you have the two samples and based on these two samples and some formulas, we'll be able to estimate the difference between the mean of the actual entire pop, you know, pilot population for Delta and United. So we'll come across a formula that will help you do that. We'll do the same thing, mu1 minus mu2, but this time we'll do it for the difference of two means for two populations in which we don't know the population standard deviations to, which means I've been given S1 and S2, which means sigma1 and sigma2 are unknown. Next, we're going to do P1 minus P2, and that will just be the difference between the two different percentages of two populations. So basically you want to know if the population of the percentage of population in one city has the same amount percentage of iPhones as the same, as a percentage in some other city. So the application is pretty obvious that that would be something you'd want to do in research. So, so our focus on this module is going to be um, estimating the mean, sigma known, estimating the mean, sigma unknown, estimating mu1 and mu2, Sigma's known, estimating mu1, mu2, sigma's unknown, estimating the percentage, and estimating the difference of the percentages. And each one has its own formulas, and I'm just going to write it for you guys so you see it here pretty quickly. You're going to have these formulas on a formula sheet, so no, no need to worry about it. So, it, But it's quite interesting that it takes a sample and a z-score and a standard deviation and somehow creates a formula that allows you to make that estimate that saves industry billions of dollars. So this is the formula they created to estimate the mean when sigma is known, estimate the mean when sigma is unknown. And you notice here, you're estimating the mean like you did above, but here, instead of sigma, you have S. Instead of sigma here, you have S. It's a sample. And you notice how here you're using a Z value, but all of a sudden in the second one, that you don't have the population standard deviation, you come across a new variable called the t-value. That's actually just like the normal distribution that you learned in module four. That's another distribution called the t-distribution. It's, it's pretty symmetric like the normal distribution. We're not gonna get into it, but uh, we're gonna have to use its value. So we're not gonna get into the t-distribution and learn uh, everything you learned about the z-distribution, but we're just gonna show you an Excel command that will allow you to find it as long as you realize that it's just another value, like instead of a Z, it's a T. Uh, so it's just another value, but it has the same connotation as the Z values under the normal distribution. Uh, we'll come across one other. And uh, the next one would be to construct the confidence interval for the difference of two means when population standard deviations are provided. So again, now here you take the difference of two means, which costs you much less to figure out and then use the formula with the z-score to figure out the estimate for the difference of two major means. And same thing on this side. The left-hand side of these, of these so-called confidence interval formulas are known as the lower confidence limit and the upper confidence limit on the right-hand side. I'll write it for you guys. So this, they call it the lower confidence limit. This side, they call it the upper confidence limit. Also, some they call it the left-hand side and the right-hand side. And just so you know, the idea is I'm gonna give you these numbers here, the X1 bar, the X2 bar, you'll figure out the Z-score using some command in Excel that I'll show you. So you basically plug everything in and ultimately what I want you to come up with is a number like 23.5 less than mu1 minus mu2 and I don't know, 86.9. So basically this would be a final answer, which would tell you me that the difference between the two averages is between 23 to 86 units, whatever that means in whatever part of, part of sort of application you're working with. So, but that, but that's the idea, because if you're wondering, okay, what are we going to do with these formulas? You're going to plug in the numbers, you're going to crunch it out on Excel, and you're going to write these as a final answer.
Right, let me continue with the rest of the formulas. Let's go sidetracked here for a second. So I want to continue writing this formula. So the next one will be the difference of two means. This time when the population standard deviations are not given. And here we're going to use a T value. And instead of sigma, we're going to use S. And you notice the same thing on both sides. One is a minus, one is a plus. Next, we're going to work on estimating the percentage of a population that uses the sample percentage. And here we use a z-score. And here we introduce a new variable, q-hat. And that's p-hat. And uh, p-hat is a sample percentage. q-hat's 1 minus p-hat. So these p-hat and q-hat are complement of each other. So if p-hat is 20%, q-hat will be 80%. So that's always the relationship between P and Q in statistics, wherever and in any context that you see them at. All right, and on this side, I'll have, I'll have P bar plus Z times P hat, Q hat over N. Uh, so, and then the last one will be P1 minus P2. Again, here you'll use the difference of sample percentages from the two populations, which again costs much less and much less time to figure it out. And here they use a Z value, P1 hat, Q1 hat over N1 plus P2 hat, Q2 hat over N2. And on this side, don't let the formula scare you. I mean, whatever. It's not like you guys have to derive these formulas and stuff. Uh, you just have to plug numbers in and crunch them out, so it's not that bad. P2 hat, Q2 hat over N2, that's a 1. All right, so these are the, these are the basically, uh, to, uh, and then, and then we've got the two standard deviation ones. So basically, uh, these are all the Z's and T's, and then we got two of them about standard deviations and variations. So one of them would be the variation, which would be the, confidence interval for like the amount of variation in the rainfall in the Amazon and that formula will be and here you'll come across two new names known as chi-square right chi-square right it's a chi-square distribution just like another z and t here's you come across another distribution let me write the formula s squared over chi-square left now here See, we've gone over the Z, and then I just told you above here when there's another one that just looks like Z, but it's T, so it's the same thing. And the chi-square, uh, the difference between chi-square and Z and T is that chi-square is a, is a skewed distribution. So whereas for Z and T, the middle is always zero, for chi-square, the start point is always zero. And this is called, the, not X-squared, but chi-square. That's a chi-square axis. And uh, for Z and T, if this is 1.5, this is minus 1.5. And same thing is true with the T, it's symmetric. But for chi-square, since it starts at zero, if this is like 15, this is like 88. So you don't have that symmetry that you have with the Z and the T distributions as you, as you, have, as you, had, you don't have that with the chi-square distribution. But again, I'm not really gonna teach you this distribution. This is really advanced stuff. I'm just going to teach you a couple of commands on Excel that will help you find these values. So really not that big of a deal again. And then, and then if I ask you to find a confidence interval for the standard deviation, which is almost the same thing, you just use the same thing. You just take the square root. So that's it. So these are, you know, if I give you a question or a test out of module five, uh, it's quite simple. One of them is going to be this. The second one is going to be that one, the third one, the fourth one, one of each. It's really simple. I mean, the, it's not like you. there's infinitely many things you need to learn. Fifth one, sixth one, seventh one, and eighth one. So it's just eight questions could possibly come out of this, uh, out of this module, uh, talking about confidence intervals. So these are known as confidence intervals. And so when you're finding a confidence interval for the mean of the population, you're basically saying that I'm estimating that the population mean is somewhere between five and six. Uh, and 
And here are the formulas you're going to be using to make that happen. All right, I'll see you guys again uh, when I start my PowerPoint presentation. Thank you.